Hello, how are you all doing? I'm just going to wait to see if anyone joins me. I've just done a uh, show with Jackie Phoenix, which was very interesting. Uh, Emma's telling me something about my latest Instagram post. What is it? All right. I've been COVID information. What's it say about it? All right, for COVID information, visit the NHS. That was what I had there. Can you see that one? Can't see it very well. Oh, 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 there you go. I mean, I never even wrote COVID on it. What? <sighs> Unbelievable lies, isn't it? Thanks very much, Mo. Yeah, I really enjoyed that show. Basically, you know, it's okay coming here on here and shouting this and that about, you know, all the shenanigans going on, but it's so amazing to actually have some kind of remedy out of this basically nightmare that's waiting for us, you know? And thank God for the guys at the Barons and stuff back then uh, who put this Magna Carta in place because without that, I think we'd be truly fucked, yeah? So, Great stuff from uh, Jackie Phoenix. If you if you don't know, basically, I had Jackie Phoenix on the show earlier, and she's talking about practical lawful dissent, which is all to do with the Magna Carta and the Oath of Allegiance to basically stand under the barons and uh, make herself exempt from all the legal bullshit that's flying around. You know what I mean? Uh, because these statutes are not actually laws. I mean, yet are under Article 61, that basically means you're upholding the true law, which is basically common law, which is common sense, really, at the end of the day. And, uh, yeah, so Jackie is most saying that she knows her stuff. Yeah, she's pretty well versed in it. I've actually got Andy coming on the show on uh, Friday. He'll be coming on at 8 o'clock shooting the shit show. And... Uh, so he'll be able to give his his topic, but I think even Andy's in awe of Jackie because she's, you know, she's the bee's knees as far as this is concerned, and I love her confidence, you know, just in the way that she knows this is the constitution. It was put in place for a reason before Parliament, so they did the twelve ninety seven uh, Magna Carta Act, uh, but that was kind of treasonous back then, so. We've got this constitution to call on, and the powers that be, they would love nothing more than to get into this Article 61. So I think it's really a race against time. Basically, as many people we can get under this oath as quickly as possible, then the sooner we can stop this insanity, the ten top 10 virus regulations. Yeah. So, yeah, most saying it must serve as CEO and bosses. I think, yeah, I don't know exactly if you have to serve them. I guess you do, really. I guess that's the whole point of it. I've never looked too much into this serving notices stuff. I've just arranged my two witnesses to get my Oath of Allegiance signed tomorrow. So I'll be posting that off. That'll feel good. And then when I go to work, they're going to have a meeting about me where I can, you know, not wear a visor and wear a visor. But I'm going to say now that, sorry, I've got something that supersedes that. It's Article 61. Here's the script. And uh, I'll put them on oral notice. I'll tell them what's going on. And uh, if they try and enforce their stuff, then we'll put them on legit notice. But basically, once they get told, they're, as far as I can see, are under an obligation. But I guess it's better to put them in paper, you know. And then I could be the hero of the factory. And you could be the hero of your work, you know. Uh, so... Uh, Nitya said, did you know the Magna Carta in its time was copied and distributed to every shire in the land? They've done away with all those shires as well, did not they? There's like Stirling Shire and all this Clackmannan Shire, but then they tried to change all that again, probably that was something to do with moving us into the New World Order with your central and your I don't know, borders and highlands, I guess. That's, they took all the shires and just made a big version of them to get rid of the power of the Shire, I guess, possibly. Definitely something I need to look into is 
the Magna Carta in a bit more detail, the more you can get clued up in this stuff, the more you can tell others about it, really, you know, pass it on. So, yeah, two days' time, a free man. I believe you're free as soon as you get the registered post thing, but obviously when they do receive it at the other end, it means you're super free. Super free, can't you list big XP? No, didn't work. Uh, aye, so anyway, and only one to view. Only four exist now and only one to view in Lincoln. So, is that right? There's only one Magna Carta left. That's quite interesting. Uh, is there anywhere you can see that online? A kind of picture of the original Magna Carta? wonder what happened to all them, eh? It's funny how one survives. It's like the universe or something has been looking after us all because thank God this was in place and people have latched onto it. I've been watching some videos today of, there's a guy's name, David Robinson, I think, something like that. And that was back in 2016. And, you know, there's all us lot looking down all the conspiracy rabbit holes. How, how have we not found this before now? I think what's the rule about necessity? There's something about when you're in dire straits, then the kind of answer pops up. And, you know, I've been trying to get out of this factory and stuff for quite some time and, you know, become kind of my own boss, but I've never really managed to do the... I'm not very good at chasing money, basically. So I've got all these things I can do. I can make videos, websites, graphics, others of stuff. I'm also trying to write a book and do lots of other stuff. But my dream is to kind of, you know... Even in Turkey for 12 years, somehow I survived outside of the system. But in Scotland, it's a bit harder uh, to just kind of... In Turkey, you know, I can teach and get paid cash in hand. But here, I've had to get a slave job, which doesn't suit my character very well. But maybe there's a purpose to that. Uh, maybe, you know, I'm supposed to be in the factory at this time because it's quite crazy. The story how I've been resisting... First of all, I resisted the fingerprint thing. Then I resisted the mask. I was arguing with the boss. Then I'm trying to say it's no health and safety. It's unhealthy. And then they were telling me, wear your mask. And then I came back to them with this uh, letter, like I've got a hidden disability. I'm extremely anxious, which is obvious. But now I'm even going to supersede that. And I believe I'll be talking to the boss of the factory in a few days' time. And I'll be hitting them with this Article 61. So I guess it's been serving a purpose, all this, you know? Because um, I think it needs... Strong people, and I wouldn't say I'm strong, you know, I mean, I'm not that strong, but anyway, it needs people to stand up against the bosses for their for their human rights and be an example for others to follow. And you guys here, I know Mo is doing it in his place of work, and you know, it needs strong people to have the balls basically to take on the system, the system SYST, you know. A cyst, like a cancerous cyst, yeah? Uh, yeah, I'm glad to hear your son, Lendl. You said your son was 16, yeah? My son is 16 as well, and uh, I've been telling him, you know, he's in Turkey because I didn't want to send him to school here with the shenanigans going on. And uh, I was saying, I, I want to come back possibly and live in Turkey in the future. I don't know, because he was out telling me there's stuff I've got in a house there. He's wanting to throw it out. I'm saying, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but basically... It'd be good to float between the two countries, you know, because Scotland's got some beautiful scenery and nice things to do, and Turkey's got good weather, which doesn't happen very often here. But I was saying to him, I'll have to save the world first. And he's like, yeah, but how? <laughs> how, Dad? Well, today I sent him a message saying, you know, I've discovered the way how we can do this. So happy days at the beach is such a relief. What a difference it is. Because I've been walking around for months, you know, just thinking there's train coming at us, you know, with all this stuff. Look at the fucking nonsense these cunts are trying to throw at us, you know what I mean? The rule of six, all these fines, all completely illegal. They know it's illegal. There's no actual government in place since 2001. That's the crazy thing. You know, no mingling, workplaces, fucking singing. They're trying to stop us singing, put on a face mask on, kill ourselves. Get home at an early time. Pub's closing at 10 o'clock. I actually sent a message to a place in Glasgow the night saying, if you want to open up, it's this kind of artistic place where they have bands in that place. And I said, I've got the answer. Let me know if you're interested. I didn't get a response. Self-isolation. People stopping from going to funerals and weddings. Again, I think somehow this is so evil. It's like forcing us to wake up. or doing us a favour, you know what I mean? Because even now, right, see we do understand this Magna Carta, and we all get on the Article 61. 
are we wanting to go back to the old way that we were living? Surely we should start realizing, you know, the lessons that all this Corona box has been teaching us. That, you know, maybe our time isn't best spent being a slave in a factory. Maybe there's other things we can do with our time. And obviously all the banks and everything's all fraud because every government should be issuing their money interest free, basically. So therefore, um, everything should come down in price in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, the thermal infrared scan. Yeah, I'm challenging them and I'm not doing that. I'm basically saying, because that's, see, they, there's no proof there's a virus. So if there's no actual proof there's that, then that's your number one thing. So why do I need scanned? Number two thing, this is government legislation and it's all bullshit. Um, the government are corrupt, they're criminals. I'm a good, honest man. So I'm putting you guys on notice. If you don't do it, then we've got this uh, the card stuff to throw back in their face. Aye, this one. This. I'm going to get that laminated and basically show them that and explain to them in great detail. And it's going to be so epic. I'll let you know how we got on, but because the, 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 one of the managers have said, let's hope we can get back to how it was a year ago. We'll have 100% got the answer for that, haven't I? So it's up to those guys, and they they can't, their bosses can't get on at them because they'll be doing the right thing as well, you know? So when you're standing in honour and truth and you have the constitution to back you up, fucking hell, it feels good, guys, eh? Uh, what's this, two guys? Yeah. I mean, I have seen quite, in, in the past, I was quite into the common law stuff and there's lots of videos out there of people arguing with the police and saying they're common uh, law and all this stuff, you know, a free man on the land and things. And the, some police backed off, but a lot of police just ignored it because obviously I don't think it holds the weight that those guys think it does, yeah? That the Freeman guys think it does. I think this basically Article 61 is the only way, as far as I can see, that I've learned from. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still getting to grips with all this stuff as well, but the it's all there. If you've seen the folder that chair that's on the Andy's site, the Practical Lawful Descent one, he's got a, a folder and it's got like this information. Where is it? All right, it's got this. It's very step-by-step -step instructions, so it's in the cloud, and it tells you what to do first of all, and then everything, the whole procedure there, yeah? So, yeah, Mo's saying that he's been, because I asked him about the pineal gland, he was the one that told me these, ther I knew the, uh, from the word go, I was like, I do know what zapped from that thermal thing, in fact, quite a lot of the time, right? I, I was dodging it, I was, for the first fucking six weeks, I was looking around and sliding down the side of this portal cabin so nobody's seen me but now they've got somebody a, a little Hitler there with a fucking clipboard six o'clock in the morning making sure everyone gets zapped so I've been zapped about five or six times and it should have been zapped for the past three months but I'll soon be putting an end to that one especially I knew something was wrong with it but most tell me it affects your pineal gland because it tells you I'm walking past it like that and it says you have to look directly at it you know so it can zap you that way and I bet you people are doing it as well. It's absolutely bananas. And since Mo told me that, I was I've been walking past it like that, you know. All the nurses hold at their wrists and refuse to be scanned. Yeah. Uh, Canada gone common law. Well, basically Canada and America actually. I think America because it was under kind of British rule at one time. I think the Magna Carta applies to them as well. But certainly the Lady Jackie in uh, Canada, there is a bit of a movement going on there. And um, basically Tristan Trudeau, whatever his name is, isn't that popular. So there's a lot of folk kind of going against him, yeah? So, oh, it's such a relief, guys. You know, this shooting the shit it was started up and I was ranting quite a lot because obviously our arses are twitching. Like, what the fuck are these cunts going to do? Because they're obviously evil. If you looked at that Agenda 21 in any great depth, I believe you can buy it on Amazon. There's a, a book that lays it out in full detail. And uh, that's scary shit. They're basically, poof, they basically, we don't want to, they're, they're taking all the countryside. It'll be illegal like, to walk in nature and things like that. You know, basically, Brave New World and uh, 
1984 together was literally what was coming. And uh, it still is, maybe. I guess not for us, but I think the word, the, the, the rabbit suit the bag now, whatever, you know, people are going to stand up against it. And this is what I've been saying to people for years. Every time the people told me that, you know, I was saying the government's bad, they go, but, but you know, we need services, we need the roads, blah, blah, blah. I say, like, if the government loves you so much, why don't they plant trees everywhere, you know? So everyone could just pick the fruit. I mean, I told you yesterday I went to the farm, 24 quid and a few bananas and a couple of apples, basically. It was basically one bag, one, you know, one carrier bag. It was quite a dent, but I think it was better fruit. It tastes a bit better than Tesco. Maybe that's just in my mind because I paid more for it, you know, but I've had a couple of fruit salads the past couple of days and it certainly feels better better than eating shite. So why don't they just grow everywhere? Food grows on trees and we're paying for it. It's completely nuts why people are paying to live. And all the animals are got the right idea and we think we're above them, you know? Yeah, Agenda 21 won't happen. Yeah, I think it is basically the awakening, yeah? It's like, we get, you have to get to a crisis point sometimes, don't you? Before uh, we actually do something about it. And then people, like, they're almost dying and it's like, oh, I better take care of my health. You know, I've been living like an alky for 30 odd years. World's End. I'm not sure if I've seen that one. Do you want to write that one down? World's End. She's my secretary. I just tell her something. She's got a notepad there. It's quite handy. I recommend it. <laughs> anyway, that's what they're there for. That's what they're there for. That and something else. Anyway, here's what uh, rebellion. People got this idea of rebellion, yeah? Simon Pegg, was that the film? Because I watched, uh, what was it, Shaun of the Dead, and then I watched uh, Hot Fuzz, and there was a third one in the series. Was it World's End? I think I've seen it then, if it's that one. So I need to look at that. Was that the one? What's the one where they all go in the drink? And that's the one we all go in the, to the pubs, isn't it? Aye. That was quite an amusing movie, aye. So, yeah, Eat Prana. Yeah, basically there is people... Like, um, you know, fruitinarians, and then they go breathinarian, isn't it? There's a guy called Genesis Sunfire, I think his name is, or something like that. Genesis Sunfire, I think it is. And he's a breathinarian. And there's quite a lot of, lot of them in India as well. And they say they live of basically the energy of the world and their saliva. That keeps them going. But I've never been one into these protests and fighting police, you know. I just don't see the purpose. Because these police are just like us. They've got a costume on, but we're not actually fighting the real criminals. The police, although they're acting criminally, they maybe never joined with that reason. They're not the ones writing these statutes into place, are they? What's this one? Ralph Smart, Infinite Waters. What's that all about? Not too sure. Anyone have the numbers for how many have taken the oath? I'm not too sure. I know, basically, last week there was about 200 in Andy's group. And then I shared it in a couple of Facebook groups. And literally the numbers, I'm not saying it was just me. Um, other people must be sharing it as well. But the next day, it was up to like 600. And now in the group, there's over 1,200. So in, in the space of a week, it's what went up 120% or something like that. Ah, right, Ralph Smart. Eats soprano, prana. Well, he's pretty smart, then, isn't he? Well, I don't like this word smart, though, isn't it? Everything's smart these days. You know, it's smartphones for dumb people and all that stuff, yeah? Yeah, Andy Barlow. Yeah, what did I say? Did I say something different? Anyway, so let's continue going through this. But, yeah, rebellion, anarchy. True anarchy is not... They, they get the words, don't they, and twist them around. So we think anarchy is like being rebellious and fighting the government. That's anarchic. But actually, anarchy is being peaceful and just, you know, having a wee sing-song around the campfire, carrying the old granny's shopping home, things like that, you know. Just not, not uh, well, basically being your own government, you know, self-governing instead of looking to someone else to tell you what to do all the time. It's no hard. Think for yourself. Christ. Obviously, people are quite well dumbed down. It's all the signs I've got everywhere. They tell you what to do all the time. So people have lost the ability to think, haven't they? So it's up to us guys to do this Article 61 and set an example. Because it's, honestly, see if I'm at my work and I'm walking around without a mask. 
it's going to be epic. I mean, already the past couple of days, there's some guys are going, what the fuck's going on? How's he getting away with that? And that was just through, you know, using their system. Now we've got Article 61, which is superseding uh, the hidden disabilities thing. So it's it's really good. Ah, it's, it's excellent, isn't it? Oh, my God. What a relief. What a relief. All this idea of, you know, getting a vaccination. We've been quite stressed this year, haven't we? It's been quite a mental year. But totally necessary, because I hated the old world. That's why I was doing all these comedy skits and stuff about it and trying to wake people up. But now we've got a remedy. It's so simple. So I'll maybe go along to Falkirk on Saturday. I'm actually thinking about printing off. I don't know if you're going to go. Uh, Nitya, where are you based? Where does that meet? You're in Perth, weren't you? Yeah. But basically, if you go to any more meetings, we should take these along and just get people to sign these bits here, yeah? Get the three other bits signed and get all the group to sign for each other so at least you can walk home with that and then you, they can look into it in more detail once they've got the witness bit signed. So that's a good idea, yeah? So it's sad how some people are so jealous and intimidated by you. Yeah, I mean, basically, I get you get a lot of grief in that, don't you, for being different. Over the years, I've had quite a lot of that. People don't understand where I'm coming from quite a lot of the time. Because a lot of the time, I don't engage, I don't give the response that you're supposed to get, give, you know? So I kind of just step back a little, let let events unfold and then choose my moment or, you know, do what I need to do. Kind of use that more than just be reactive all the time, yeah? That's right, if you're getting the people to sign it, no criminal record in the past 10 years. What would happen though, Mo, do you know the answer to this one? If somebody has a criminal record, would they still be able to stand under Article 61? Or is that going to make it more difficult? Somebody did ask me that. I'll not reveal who, but basically, you know, that could be a concern. Um, yeah. Here's the, it's quite hard for lots of couples out there as well these days, isn't it? Because it was hard for me in previous relationships whereby I'm awake to the stuff in your partner, isn't it? Yeah. So, Mo's saying, I believe it wouldn't work if they were if they were. So if they had a criminal record, they wouldn't be able to stand under Article 61 in the last 10 years. Is that what you're saying, Mo? So that's not so good, is it? I guess if everyone else is doing it, eventually it will just become par for the course and these lawyers and stuff will have to back off. Yeah? So it's up for the majority of people to uh, get on board with this and then that will protect everyone eventually hopefully. And then all the other countries who don't have the Magna Carta, maybe they'll take the example from that once these countries are totally free. Yeah? Uh, so, Nietzsche's saying, I will. I f need to do more reading as I haven't done any on it, but fighting systems in other arenas, yeah? Yeah. Again, this word fighting, we all get trained to fight all the time. It's not a very good mindset, is it? You know, let's go to war with them, let's fight the system. You know, I'll, I'll keep saying, like, we don't need another revolution, we need a tangent point, we need to go a different direction. But in saying that, now that we know this Article 61, I mean, obviously, there's lots of things in the world that are not good. <clears throat> and once we've got our um, power back, <clears throat> I'm, I, as I said, I was trying to make the point that this COVID thing could be a wake up for us all to choose a better way of living, you know. and do we really want to go back to Friday night getting totally drunk and starting fights and stuff like that? Because that's not acting in honour, is it? We need to educate these people that that's not the way to behave anymore. There's better ways to behave. I think it's because of lack of love in the world, you know, a lack of empathy, a lack of communi communi community. So, basically, I don't want to be part of my community if they're all diddies, basically, you know? So we have to try and inspire people for them to aspire to greater things. So instead of them just getting drunk and playing the Xbox or whatever, although there's nothing wrong with that per se, but you know what I mean? Stop being brain dead. Well said, Laura. Because <laughs> uh, not many people there have an, a brain on active duty, do they? It's just like, there's no... You have to teach critical thinking. Uh, the trivium, grammar, logic and rhetoric. And then we teach people how to think. 
and give them options because a lot of people don't see much options in their life and they just abuse themselves because what else is there to do you know but if you like like get the opportunity to maybe play a musical instrument have the chance to get taught well you know that passion for something or that uh, time spent learning something new and getting better at something will overtake your need to go and uh, get drunk and just uh, watch the football or something like that. You'll have a new passion. I think the Gnostic Christians they used to say they were pointed. You know, it was. And I think John Lennon had a quote whereby he says, "You know, you've got to have hope in life." I think it was in an interview one time. You definitely need hope. That's why I've always, over the years, since I basically I tried to be a rock star back in the day, and then once I discovered with conspiracy theories, I tried to be Bill Hicks. You know. And uh, always try to do something, move towards something, going in that direction. Because I get up in the day, what are you going to do? You're going to watch TV, or you're going to try and I try and do something each day that's going to move my life forward. So over a period of time, you've moved from point A to point B, and then point B to point C. It's like once one day at a time. Sweet Jesus is all I'm asking of you. Who sung that song? You get a bonus point for that one. Uh, yeah, what shirt? You're wearing a mask and staying six feet from people simply because your government told you to, aren't you? <laughs> Glad he didn't tell you to suck a dick. Yeah, I've, it's, it's unbelievable what they're doing, isn't it? You wonder how far they would go. I think they're just doing it for a laugh, quite a lot of this stuff, you know? No singing in church and things like that. This is what it feels like, hey, if you're on a desert island, it's like, don't send help, you know? Stay away, organise society, get the fuck. I just feel so good now. We can joke about these things and there's like there's, there's no the same element of fear, I guess, of what's coming down, you know? There's no that same element of uh, impending nightmare scenario. It's like, wake up, wake up, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Fucking hell, shit, it's coming down. It's, oh my God. Now we can just look at these things and have a wee chuckle because we've got the answer. It has arrived. Thank fuck for the barons. Aye. Thank fuck for the oath, oath of allegiance. Get us out of this reality. So basically this is uh, what it's going to be the way, obviously, to lead in the new form of consciousness and humanity. You know, we've got so much hidden potential that isn't getting the chance to express itself because we're too busy on that hamster wheel just surviving so we can pay the parasites tax on money that they created out of thin air, giving them a sweat equity, you know? Basically, up the fuck we must wake. I think that was Yoda's best quote, yeah? Was that Return of the Jedi? That quote, I can't quite remember, I. Until the fear peaks in the masses, yeah. If, yeah, I guess they've got to get so far down the road. I, I don't know. Fearful. Yeah, I try not to live in fear, you know? It's, it's hard to be totally fearless. I always... Sometimes, it, there was that book in the past, wasn't it? Um, feel the fear, but do it anyway. I've I've been like that in quite a lot of things in life, lots of situations. Like, even doing stand-up comedy is something that you force yourself, because before you go on stage, you know, basically you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position, whereby you're saying, I can make you laugh. And no matter how good you think you are, there's always that element of doubt which creates the anxiety, which I think, maybe anxiety is not a good word, excitement. It's how you label things as well, because you could say nervous or anxious, but actually it's excitement. And then that puts you in a better state, you know? And then once you do the thing and you overcome it and you see that it's not as bad as your mind is making out, then that gives you less fear the next time, so to speak, you know? Certainly over the years... When I first started doing comedy, I would shit myself before quite a number of gigs, you know, until I got to a point where I was like, well, I've got a lot of material here. I've had enough experience. I can, I know I'm going to be able to get through it one way or another. So, and then through that, you can do other things in life. Like I lived in Turkey for 12 years and literally day to day, I didn't know how I was going to survive and somehow I'd done it. So that toughens you up as well. And I think a lot of people have just been locked in their job and that kind of needing that job for security and they've not put themselves out there and lived on the edge and took risks and had adventures 
that basically toughen you up, you know? And that makes you lose the fear because then you realise, well, things have went wrong. They've went majorly fucked up and I'm still here. So how bad can I get? And that's basically basically what gives you the confidence to, well, for me right now, to talk to the bosses and say, well, fuck it. If they sack me, I'll survive. I don't know how right now, but I'll get through it, you know? But lots of people can't can't get out of that dependency. That's it's very much locked in that mindset. And until you've broke free of it, then uh, basically you're going to be trapped by it, yeah? So you can lead a sheep to knowledge, but you can't make it think, okay? These sheep get a lot of abuse, don't they? Because a sheep has just been a sheep. But the people themselves, they uh, should have a bit more intelligence than a sheep, you know? So I met my spirit animal that appeared in my body, says Mo. I don't have the photo. Was an old phone that broke? I'm not sure what you mean there. What do you mean an image appeared on your body? And what spirit animal did you meet? So Mo has seen reptiles and spirit animals. I'm feeling very, very left out here. <laughs> I need some, I guess I need to meditate more and, you know, connect to my higher self. I think probably it, Everybody has these uh, abilities to some extent, yeah? It's just to keep, some people are more able to see these things naturally and other people maybe have to work a bit harder. But yeah, I have been some psychics and that tell you some things about your spirit guides or your grandma or whatever, you know, you never know what to believe. Wolf, yeah. Wolf's a good gin. A wolf in sheep's clothing, that's a Fabian society though, yeah? A wolf is not good in that aspect. That's why, you know, the judges in the courthouses, they have the, the woolen wig because they're a wolf in sheep's clothing. And uh, they also wear the wig to hide their thoughts from God as well, apparently. So your wolf appeared an image in the back of your hair. I felt the weight attached to my head and neck. That's quite crazy. How did you see an image in the back of your hair? That's, you know, quite crazy. And a black panther. Were you one of the black panthers? Was that like in the, the 60s? Was that what they called the black panthers, weren't they? The kind of black uh, political group, yeah? Oh, join the Jedi. Stephen is still recruiting. Yeah, I know. I should do that, shouldn't I? For those of you that don't know, Stephen D. Kelly, who I interview on a weekly basis, uh, basically has Jedis who attack the reptiles in their sleep. Um, it could be quite interesting that, because I'm sure it leads to some interesting dreams. I should take that oath as well, eh? Why not? In for a penny, in for a pound. So you took, if something appeared in the back of your head, you're saying, what, and then you took a picture of it. Oh, and you lost the picture. All right, that's quite crazy. Yeah, but see this fucking conspiracy theory, uh, Oh, God, it's so lame, isn't it? Oh, you get it all the time. Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist then, are you? Just please have an original thought. Stop hitting me with that nonsense. Let's have a critical debate about something, you know? Instead of just out, automatically out of the box to save you from looking at anything that you don't, that the BBC doesn't talk about, that you just accuse somebody of being a conspiracy theorist. It's so lame. It's the lamest thing ever. And here's something else that's uh, not very good in the world of the people out there. You know, these snitches, who are these absolute cunts out there? And there's no other word for them that are going to snitch on people who aren't wearing a mask. And that just reminds me of a good story that I heard. Emma, my lovely uh, secretary here, had a good gin. <laughs> I'd say secretary, but she doesn't type, so what we'll call her? Assistant. Yes? Yeah? Assistant stroke bird, right? Anyway, she was telling one, uh, so in the London underground, one guy approached someone, was it just approached one person or three people? All right, one guy approached two men and a woman and uh, basically said to them, you know wearing a mask, right? Now, I'm not agreeing with this reaction and I don't know how this guy went about telling them, you know, it could have been quite aggressive about it. But basically, these must have been the men that beat up him, surely the women, aye. But basically, this guy got the sh absolute shit beat out of him. He got his jaw broke and what else? 
Aye. His eye socket broke in three places. That's what we should do to the neighbourhood snitches if I was a hateful man, do you know what I mean? But they're the worst kind of scum. Your actual own people snitching on you and going on the side of the government. It's so unbelievably incredible how they've stitched these people's brains right up, isn't it? It's just... I'm sure they must have a fucking microchip in them already because they seem to be pretty well controlled, you know? So, yeah... That's, you needed help, guidance and strength and it appeared. That's good. Interesting stuff. Here's, I like my Bob Stagnito. Check him out on uh, Facebook. He always posts kind of good snippets like this. I've interviewed Bob along with Don and David one time and he's a acupuncturist and for 30 years he's been healing people with all kinds of ailments and he says he's never got ill from them because he eats well. So he obviously knows that the COVID thing is 100% bullshit and yes there are more people getting ill uh, every year and uh, it's not because of bacteria and viruses which people can't even seem to get their head around it's fucking obvious if you ask me by this point because uh, all the shite food they were eating and the EMFs etc you know and then they go to the doctor and get toxic medications and vaccines and this idea of a vaccine being able to cure someone is completely insane it's like you're ill and this vaccine is going to make you healthy. But actually, if you're healthy, the vaccine will make you ill. So it's all back to front and stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah, these snitches and, and also, again, the mask wearers, I guess we should try and be a little bit compassionate towards them, whereby they actually think they're doing the right thing. You know, they're actually thinking they're doing a good thing. But as you say there, uh, Wanata, Juanita, Juanita is probably how you say it, yeah? Um, television. Television's a hell of a thing. It's so powerful, that TV. It makes them think that they're thinking their own thoughts, but they're actually 100% programmed in there. Yeah. So this T-shirt, I actually had to do this because there's T-shirts getting sold like this. There's people, Earth isn't flat. Now, I did think Earth was flat. Talking to Stephen D. Magner, uh, Stephen D. Magner, <laughs> There's lots of Stevens in my life these days. Stephen D. Kelly, he told me in, my, in the, one of the interview I done a couple of months ago. He explained to me how the Earth is a sphere. I'm still 50/50 in that one. I was a more or less 95, going towards 100 that it was flat, and there is like a dome. But anyway, he's got a different opinion. His knowledge of science is far better than mine. Until I could actually go way up in the sky and see it for myself. I guess we'll never know. But yeah, we've been to the moon. Um, that's bollocks. You obviously know... Uh, what do we call it? I mean, even that idea where fucking they were on the moon and they gave Richard Nixon a call for the moon. How insane is that? <laughs> that was just a joke. But what was the guy's name, the director? Oh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Don't tell me, it's fucking so obvious. Who's the director? I can't believe it. Stanley Kubrick, oh god, that was a brain fart there, eh? First man was a cameraman, that's a classic as well. The guy's on the moon. Oh, here comes Neil just jumping off, yeah? And Buzz Aldrin, there's quite a few interviews with him. Uh, they asked him to swear in the Bible that he'd been to the moon and he was punching people, yeah? Yeah, I don't know how I forgot Kubrick. That was a thing, Do you know, like, there's like 20 minutes of this last movie, the one with Tom Cruise, Eyes Wide Shut, uh, that went missing. Because apparently when he'd done the deal to film 2001 A Space Odyssey, he also filmed the moon landings at the same time. And part of the contract was he could make any movie he wanted and with no restrictions on it. So he knew when he was giving that Eyes Wide Shut movie to the studios that they weren't going to like it. And they didn't like it. Apparently they went ballistic. They cut 20 minutes out of it. And... He died not long after, so that was one way to put an end to a contract, yeah? But yeah, we didn't go to the moon. I was tonight, uh, there, went for a wee walk in between the previous show and this show, and the moon was so bright. You know, we talk about moonlight. There's no way is that light, you know, bouncing off the sun and coming down. That is emanating from the moon. It's ridiculously obvious because the whole sky around it is bright. So, again, it's just these unbelievable lies that we get told. Yeah, the beliefs aren't facts. 
evolution. Yeah, we didn't evolve from apes. There was definitely some genetic manipulation at some point. Climate change, that's another thing they're going to use, as well as COVID, isn't it? To make us pay for fucking living, pay for breathing and stuff like that. And here's a, here is an action. Somebody actually bought this fucking thing. Aye? Biological sex exists. Aye. Vaccines work. I mean, give us a fucking break. We should get our own one, yeah? If you think COVID's real, you're a fucking dick. But look, here is COVID itself. Speaking of the, speak of the devil, and it shall appear. Yeah, be put on nights 10 to 5. Is Greta back in the scene? Oh my God. I didn't pay much attention to Greta. You know, I'm no big for watching the news, but when you do hear her, she's got one of those voices, that whiny. I mean, the fact that governments and stuff are listening to a 13-year-old girl, I mean, it's just beyond a joke, isn't it? Well, sorry, a 13-year-old MK Ultra victim, because obviously she's uh, mind-controlled, as far as I can see, just to unroll the agenda. But, yeah... I mean, this thing about curfew at 10 o'clock, and how are they going to stand there, these politicians, and spout this shit? And, it, I don't know, it defies belief, doesn't it? The world, it gives you a headache just thinking about how insane the world is and how these politicians can spout this shit, and then when people believe it, yeah, that's the face they've got when people go, the pandemic is real, yeah, yeah, it's real, all right. I can somebody that died for it. I can of course it's real. I can't someone that died for you. You can? Who the fuck was that? I actually, there was a friend who I thought was quite, uh, you know, conscious because back in the day I'd done a comedy gig and he liked it and I started sharing music with him. Then I gave him the David Icke book and he was actually getting Frankie Boyle into it. Uh, and then he's I gave him the, the link to what really makes you ill.com. He says, oh, I don't think your friend's uh, website will beat my real experience of somebody I can having it or dying for it or whatever. I was like, oh well, pff, there goes critical thinking once again, you know what I mean? Surely you should look at the evidence first before dismissing it out of hand, you know? Yeah, you're saying she's a boy, that wouldn't surprise me. There's so much of this, uh, what do you call it, uh, trans stuff going on, you know? The Baphomets running around. What do you think of the Venus Williams and the Serena Williams? Yeah, have you seen the videos of them when they were younger? It was obviously two young laddies, wasn't it? That their father knew they was going to make a ton of money from tennis. So just cut your balls off, guys. We'll give you some hormones. Grow a pair of tits and let's see if you can win some tennis tournaments. And now fucking Serena's had a baby. I believe that. I believe anything. Serena, the fucking... You know, Serena and who's the other one? Michelle Obama. Aye. So another one. Transgender, yeah? Who's not proper transgender? I'm not sure what you mean there. Greta is big in Bristol. What? You have a... <laughs> oh my God, Bristol. I was actually... I was down in Bristol and I thought Bristol in that part of the world... I guess that's the problem. They've got this leftist kind of ideology, isn't it? This liberal thing where anything goes and these people are trained to, like, be, it's, it's cool if you're transgender, it's cool if you identify as a woman and all this stuff. You know, it's the future. We're all evolving. We can be anything we want now. And it's just, you know, they don't realise that it's, they're programmed. And they've turned into the fucking fascists. Because if you try and call them out, they fucking try and ban you from Facebook and all the rest of it. You know, it's call you out sexist and all the rest of it. If you try to just say there's no need for this, you know, LGBTQ shit getting shoved in or gub every time, I don't give a flying fuck what sex you are, just get on with it. There's no need for marches about it, and there's no need for any of the rest of it. Just live your life, live and let live is basically the common law thing again, isn't it? Don't do harm to anyone else, and then be a dick, and uh, that's it, you know what I mean? I hate how they've basically hijacked the rainbow. The rainbow used to be a good thing, you know what I mean? Now it's fucking symbolic with sexual, I wouldn't say perversions as such, obviously when it starts getting towards the paedophilia element of it that they're trying to bring in through it, because that's what it's all geared towards. They're trying to make it 
intergenerational love is the, the quote, isn't it? We had rara skirts, fluorescent socks, they have transgender. <laughs> yeah. Forced to identify as a girl. Is that true? I didn't know that. As I say, I don't pay that much attention. That's true. We did have, in the 80s, yeah, some fluorescent socks, quality stuff, stay press and all that. So there we go. See, when you see babies like that, though, so brainwashed by television, they're putting oxygen restrict restrictors on their own children. It's it's beyond imagination how they could actually, somebody could do that to their kid. And the, the, especially the importance of when they put the mask on themselves, the, the children trying to learn about the world. It's just making everyone faceless and creating robots, isn't it? Thank God for Article 61. That's all I can say. Thank God for this because the way the world was heading wasn't good. And uh, this basically does seem to be the way to step out of this madness. So, and uh, thankfully maybe, you know, we've had this eight months so people are waking up and I think this Article 61 is just getting to a point now at the right time, I think, for us all to kind of say, ah, thank fuck, let's get on this case. Because we've all been searching for a way to take our freedom back, yeah? I was actually speaking about this uh, with Emma on the walk. I, well, I was talking about what Braveheart, you know, William Wallace there, 1305 and stuff like that, when he was doing his battles of Falkirk and everything in Bannockburn. And then they had the, the false Magna Carta in 1297. So, you know, maybe they knew the original one, and then this Monfrey Parliament came in place, and he was like, fuck this, let's take our, our power back, you know? And uh, on another thread sometimes, somebody said, uh, where's William Wallace when you need him? So I posted my The Time Has Come video, and it says, I'm William Watson, will that do? And uh, they said, uh, well, close enough is all we've got just now, I guess. But anyway, when I was telling that story, she thought I was going to claim to be William Watson of the 20th century, I guess. No? Anyway, the point is, look what's happened to us, yeah? We used to stand up for freedom, real men. This is what we're needing. But now, actually, we don't need to go and fight these guys. We just need to get the pen. The pen is mightier than the sword, yeah? So let's get off the sofa, put the Xbox down for a while, do some reading, send your paperwork off, and stop these guys in their tracks instead of uh, fighting bloody revolutions, which I guess they had to do back then, yeah? So, Nietzsche is saying a good article the other day. You know the author suggested currently 40% want to go back to the way we were, 40% going to sleep. Well, I guess that's a reaction, isn't it? They bury their head deeper in the sand. Just do what the government says, put your mask on and not look at anything. I guess there is that element of it, yeah? 15% unsure of what's going on. There is definitely people out there when you bring up the topic, they're more open than others to it. You get ones that are you know, holding on desperately to the old way and the government and the belief system and they'll not even look at it, but certainly you do find the odd one or two that you can try and think you get some kind of message across, but whether it actually goes into the brain or not or they take it on board fully, maybe they need to hear it a bit more often. And again with this Article 61, if we start showing them some results because uh, everything's evidence-based, you know, if I'm going to be walking around the factory without a mask and they see it, they're going to be wondering why. So that is the way for the 5%, the pioneering ones. Us law, the Billy Watson tribe, I... Uh. <laughs> uh, anyway, for us to yeah, bring in this new world, yeah, and drag the rest of them with us, hopefully. Um but sooner rather than later, because, you know, they can still try and enforce these lockdowns and shit, but if the supermarkets are closed, then it's going to be a bit hard, isn't it? So we need to get everybody on board as quickly as possible. Yeah. Here it is. You either have the tools when you're born or not. Yeah. Well, hopefully some of these can be learned. I think a lot of people, you know, the sheep element, if everyone else is doing it, then they'll join in, yeah? I mean, can you believe all the nonsense, all these, like, leaflets and posters and even signs like this that are getting put up in the name of COVID? And this COVID doesn't even actually exist. Yeah? Obviously, 
Surely somebody's got a sense of humour when they're doing stuff like this. Do not touch other players' balls, aye? Wash your hands after touching your own balls, aye? Uh, thankfully, you can bring humour into this nonsense, yeah? Yeah, Pedo would... Do you know, any of you know anything about the history of Hollywood? This is, you know how you pick up lots of stuff when you're deep in the rabbit hole over time? Now, I heard in the East, in the New York area, they used to have these machines where you put a coin in the machine. It'd be like a, a movie thing where it had lots of pictures. You know, you get the book and you go, Brrr, and it looks like they're doing something. Well, it's like an early movie form of that, and it had some kind of uh, sexual act. It was like a porn thing. Well, apparently, a certain group of people who run Hollywood took those machines or the idea of those machines and then took them to Hollywood, kind of stole the idea, so it was based on theft, and then or and then went to the West Coast, <coughs> and uh, that's how they made their money to begin with, and then out of that came Hollywood. So the whole thing right from the start was based on theft and perversion, really, yeah? Uh, isn't it something to do with the place the pedos go? Yeah, I'm not too sure. So... That was an interesting one. Did you hear what uh, uh, Jackie was saying about the Hitler in 1942? There was a document that became the Maastricht Treaty, and it was basically saying that if Germany lost the physical war, you know, with the guns, they were going to take over all the corporations to make sure that the United States of Europe came into play, which is what Hitler was after. So if you look at what happened told the Nazis, Werner von Braun, head of NS, uh, NASA, you know what I mean? They all went through Project Paperclip straight into America and basically formed the CIA. So, it's fucking bananas, isn't it? Just smoking mirrors. Evil just protecting itself at the end of the day. All the parasites, they want to just get us to do all the work and for us to be the slaves. And uh, we're all supposed to go along with it. And yet, give them all the guns. I never understood that one. Like, give the police and that all of your guns and knives and that. Give them all their weapons, but they're allowed to keep the weapons. I was like, no, let's make it a fair fight. You've got the weapons, we've got the weapons. And the point is, if you want to ban weapons, why don't you shut the factories down that are making these fucking, you know, killing machines? Why do they exist in the first place? Aye? Right? So, uh, one rule for them and one rule for us, yeah? Sorry for jumping about from topic to topic here. I just, uh, I load them up and this is how we go. Uh, the purpose of colds and flus, we should actually be thankful for them. Stop chucking in uh, lots of toxic chemicals to try and get rid of them and just let them run their course because that's your body detoxifying. <coughs> I knew what it's more. Uh, I'll be going in five minutes myself. My throat's starting to play up again. <clears throat> I was talking, I was saying about coincidences. Yesterday I was complaining about having a sore throat. And then after the show finished, I switched on the Robert Sproul video where he was explaining why the talk is cancelled on Sunday. And he was complaining of a sore throat. And I just had to laugh, you know. Me and Emma just look at each other and they're like, oh, fucking hell. Another mental coincidence. Hi. <laughs> It's, it becomes less and less mental. It's just like par for the course now, isn't it? It's like the universe talking to us, you know? Do you ever get that feeling? It's like something's magical going on here because I told you the one about the deaf dog the other day. I mean, that was, what's the fucking chances? Of that? That's the first time I've ever seen a dog going around with an aluminous jacket on. Well, maybe I've seen one or two of them, but definitely the first time I've ever seen deaf dog written on a thing. And then on the actual poster, there was a deaf dog. On the wall, the mural. It's just, that's like 10 zillion billion to one, the chances of that, isn't it? It's insane. Aye, choose some black peppercorns, about seven. And uh, Steve was telling me yesterday about lemon and ginger, yeah? I need to get into some of that. So, there we go. Doctor, I don't feel well. This is his doctor. This is how we know the medical establishment is inherently evil, because they never tell us about meditating. Get exercise, avoid shit food, eat organic food, veg, spend more time in nature, maybe get your feet in the bare grass, you know, uh, connect to the earth, stop worrying about things you can't control, 
ditch the TV. That should be the fucking top of the list and come back in three weeks. Aye. Manuka Honey. Okay, you're writing this, to, write this one down. Manuka Honey. And what was the other one? Choose some black peppercorns. About seven black peppercorns. Aye, the big farmer doctors don't want you. Well, basically, I uh, keep them ill, and uh, that was a whole Rockefeller Codex Alimentarius, I think is the correct name for it, isn't it? Profit from your illness. Did they ever tell you this story? Here's a good one. I think I mentioned it before, but it's worth the saying. Down in Devon, doing a shamanic. Well, I was doing a body electronics course. So maybe tell you about that one night where you hold points in the body and it heals you. Anyway. We done this ceremony one night, and it was kind of a little bit black magic because we had to take blood, right? So he claimed he was a white witch, this uh, or a white using white magic. But basically, we done this thing with Kali, and we had all these different. You know, Kali's a great destroyer, so we had a, a, a skull. It was like a human skull, but it was a very small thing. So anyway, we all had to get a prick and take one drop of blood and put it in this bowl, and we all had these different. Uh, tools of Cali, and I think we took some peyote or something like that, some kind of stimulant. Then the shaman done his jo -jo 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 magic spell, and the whole point of it was to take the evil that Codex Alimentarius does to the people and to send it back to them, basically. So we weren't actually creating the ill, we were just holding up a mirror for it to shoot back to them. And then, basically, the next day, nothing happened, but the day after that, we went to a garden uh, centre because we had to eat raw fruit or vegetables because that meant we had the correct enzymes in our body to burn off the DNA, uh, kind of suppressed DNA uh, that the, the emotions get trapped in, right? So it, it burns off and you have you can't eat meat and stuff. You have to, so anyway, we were in the garden centre and I see a newspaper and on the front page of the newspaper, it said Buckingham Palace gets swine flu. We were like, yes, we'll take that as a result. Aye. Now, of course, now we know that there's no such thing as contagious flu and stuff like that, but it was a bit more naive back then. Aye. So maybe it didn't work after all. Maybe we'd just done all that dancing and <laughs> bloodletting for nothing. What can you do? Thankfully, it wasn't too excessive. It was just a couple of pricks, you know? Aye. The shaman and me, a couple of pricks. <laughs> I've been. I actually got called a prick the other day. What was that one? Don't be. Uh, uh, you get some. Do you guys get that as well when you comment these fucking sheeple? They're so abusive, aren't they? It's ridiculous. Aye. Just get called a total prick for trying to help people. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. How far would people go? You know. Yeah, you got to wear a bag over your head now. You got to wear a bag. Some. I, I posted that. Some people would actually do it. Now, obviously, that's just a meme. Sometimes you post a meme just for a laugh, don't you? You don't say, ah, fuck it, I'll chuck this shit out, you can. Just to fucking stay in contact with people and whatever, you know. It's just a bit of fun sometimes, isn't it? Uh, so, I don't want to be trapped in the social media world all the time. You know, I'd rather be outside in nature, but this seems to be the way the world to do. But anyway, I so some guy came back and said, didn't he be stupid? Of course people want to do it. But about a year ago, if you told them, you know, everyone's going to be wearing masks, you'd have the same thing. So maybe people would do it, aye? So what are you saying there? Those dollar menus are full of crap. Yeah. I watched a video of a Japanese scientist, but awake, pouring it in a cancerous tumour. All right, what are you talking about? I've missed something. Oh, bicarbonate of soda. What's this? Yeah, do you know that? Uh, the Cancer Act, 1949, the Navy Natural Hero. I think in the act, you know, actually, if you claim that you, you can cure cancer because of that act, you can be put in jail for claiming you've got a cure for cancer, even if you, you are curing cancer. That's not the point. So, yeah, they took every natural healer out. Big pharma campaign to destroy... How do you pronounce that word? Naturopathy. I'm not very good at some big words. But anyway... Uh, yeah, so that that was a fucking horrible act. Again, it's one of these acts and statutes that are actually bullshit. And they know it's all bullshit, don't they? Yeah. So, let's see. We're going to wrap this up shortly. Uh, 
how to boil a frog, aye? Good night, Mo. I'm just going to go myself soon, pal. How to boil a frog? It's just till we flatten the curve. Oh, God, aye. It's just non-essential workers. It's just your small business. Two metres. Track and trace. Two metres, six feet, you know. Fucking, it's got to have the number six in there all the time. Track and trace. Who are these people that go to pubs and give them their names, their real names and phone numbers, and then they're going to get a call saying, you can't go to work for two weeks. You can? It's a bit fucking idiotic, is it, no? It's like the guy who's standing on the edge of a branch and he's cutting the fucking branch off to save himself, but he's on the wrong side of it. You know what I mean? So he's going to fall. Just people willingly complying with their own fucking death and destruction. Cottage cheese and flax seed oil for the big C. Yeah. I think there's quite a few different methods for the cancer. I think apparently Don and David were saying that actually we do all kind of get cancers from time to time. And they actually come and go in the body. Um, I guess if you keep eating crap food and stuff, then maybe they'll grow. But she says that that can be happening inside herself. So when the hospital says, oh, you've got cancer, maybe we don't need to fucking start giving them chemotherapy straight away. You know, get them on a natural diet and it'll just disappear. That's the problem. Uh I was staying in a pub at early lockdown and we were having a midnight lock-ins <laughs> and all day they are wearing masks. Aye. <laughs> just peace enforcement. It's just the army. Just that we get a vaccine. You can't believe people are actually buying this nonsense, eh? Again, I'm so out of touch. I think, and I'm just like, the general population and their beliefs, when they hear me talk, they must think I'm a complete fucking lunatic because I'm so, so far removed from the program and the system Again, living in Turkey for 12 years, I've never watched any fucking TV, apart from when I go to maybe a holiday resort. And I hate how they're always showing the fucking BBC News and that, and as if it's a thing everybody has to watch. You're eating your English breakfast, which is fucking full of dead animals and shit. And then you've got the news fucking programming you. It's like, in my workplace, I've got these big things that says, if you're suffering from stress and anxiety, call this number. And then it's got the BBC News getting fucking shown 24 hours a day in the canteen. I was like, aye, that's causing me the fucking distress right there. Get that off and I might start feeling better. Yeah? So here we go. We'll, lo we'll leave, in, leave you in this one. Uh, what's this one? Imagine, if you will, the planet awakening and experiencing a shift of consciousness so great that governments around the world conduct psychological war warfare on their own citizens and attempt to control them by lowering their vibrations and keeping them in a state of fear. I don't need to imagine it. That's obviously what's going on. And everybody's like that. Yeah, pound that narrative. Switch on the TV. Fuck me up the ass. There's actually, in my book, I've got a bit about that. Basically, the government's using a big double-ended dildo to fuck us up the ass and we're all willingly bending over for it. So, I think we need to put an end to that, Ian. Uh, aye. Why have I got... I've got. I've left that one up. I never even noticed that until now, yeah? Jackie's information. Anyway, I'll not do any harm. It's a good site to go to. If you want to support me in any way, you can buy my e-books before my other e-book comes out, before my main book comes out. The e-books have got some pictures and that in it. Anyway, nothing beats having the real book. I trust you're all going to buy that when it comes out, aye? So we're going to at least sell five copies. Anyway, that's been me for tonight, folks. Um, let's see. Aye. Aye, oh dear. That's been me for tonight. Panda, pound up, pound, I've pounded my narrative into you for 64 minutes. It's all over. I'm going to be back tomorrow night at 6 o'clock for another chat with Jackie and then we're back at 8 o'clock for Nitya to come on and tell us all about the 5D is that right Nitya, yeah? we're still doing that, full steam ahead if you're hanging around Nitya uh, basically you can send a message on Facebook if you want to test this system out now we can do that now you're welcome Laura and everyone else, thanks for hanging around take care bye bye just now and I'll see you tomorrow. Get on to the Article 61 stuff. Get these oaths filled out, yeah? Cheers.